lot of people realize that they have a lot to maintain. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, me personally, every monthly, I got $52,000 in bills. You know what I'm saying? And I have to work. <gasps> okay, by the way, that's that's kind of look for a guy of his stature, 52000 a month in bills. That's over $600,000 a year in expenses. By the way, 13 mil sounds like a lot of money. Some of you think that make, having a million dollars is a lot of money, $5 million is a lot of money, $10 million, $100 million is a lot of money. But the problem is, is if you increase your lifestyle to match your, your, your current uh, income, and this is what a lot of people do. Forget, by the way, forget $50,000, $52,000 a month. Some of you have expenses of $5,200 a month, and yet you're only earning $5,000 a month. You're earning $5,000 a month, but yet you're spending $5,200. The other $200, you're extending yourself on credit or cash advances. Why? Because as the income grows, guess what also grows? Their eyeballs, their tastes, their lifestyle. What's cracking, everybody? Money smart guy, Matt Zipali here. Healing to you from Dallas, Texas. And once again, we have another reaction video from a celebrity, an artist, an entertainer, so we can see how people of success handle things as simple as finance, leadership development, uh, their walk with their faith, and uh, how they impact other people in their lives. So uh, we have little Yachty on this one, again, on the Million Dollars with the Game podcast. And so uh, let's dive into what little Yachty said about financial literacy, about buying jewelry, multiple streams of income, his monthly expenses, importance of credit. We got a lot of stuff to unpack here in this episode, so let's dive right into it. I want to, you know, I want to talk about, is it cool if I do that? I yeah, do you, do you, man. I don't want to talk about, I hate, when I was coming up, like, I used to listen, watch interviews and shit, like, before 2016, and I used to think some shit was so corny, like, niggas give advice, but I'm, I gotta say, like, I love, I, it's so important for me to tell people, like, the youngsters come into the game that it's not important to buy jewelry. You know, I always want to talk about it. It's interesting. We've done a lot of these reaction videos. Gucci Mane, Yo Gotti. We've had Jack Harlow. And a lot of them have the same conversation. This is what I used to do when I was thinking when I was young. And then I actually got marinated into what it's all about. And then I realized, man, it's really not that important. I'm looking at him right now, Lil, Lil Yachty. Not a lot of jewelry outside of his watch. Got his hair done, but not a big chain. Not a big... Bracelets, just a watch. Talk about it because I spent four million dollars on jewelry. You know, when I got into a lawsuit yes. with a jeweler, and um, it caused me and my mom to finally take to go because I don't use cash for anything. So uh -huh. we went and pulled all our statements for every piece, any diamond we have ever bought since 2016, and entitled totaled up to four million dollars. For by the way, great record keeping on his end, accounting, uh, whether you use checks or whether you use the credit card to purchase his diamonds, his jewelry, at least it was documented somehow, some way, so therefore he can account for what he paid for. So if he, now he's dealing with this lawsuit, they're gonna ask for a discovery. He's got everything documented and it's very difficult to fight against somebody that's got documentation, especially that can prove their side of the story. So let's continue. Four point something. And, and, and then I realized I don't wear any of it. None of it, none of it, and half of it, more than half of it. You got this shit on now. <laughs> well, I just, this just got clean. That's why I got this on. Oh, okay, I, no, I see a chain. I see a chain. I, I see a chain really earlier. I, I plain watches, my, my big earrings, you know what I'm saying? But that's it, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But So all the stuff that he bought, all the stuff that he went through a lawsuit for, you realize, I didn't use none of this stuff. And so think about this real quick. How many things have you bought? How many things have you purchased just to impress somebody else, just to show that you got something, whatever the case may be. But what's it all for? What's the purpose? What does jewelry mean to you? For me, it's an investment, not necessarily a floss. By the way, jewelry back in the day is a easier way to transfer wealth because you're not carrying bricks of gold and bricks of silver, but you can carry amulets, bracelets, necklaces, right? So what does jewelry mean to you? Is it meant to impress other people or is it the transference of wealth or is it for you to say, hey, I'm just trying to show my class. Who knows? I'm just curious. Why do you buy jewelry? Do you wear jewelry? Why do you wear it? Put it in the comment section below. I'm curious about what you have to say here as part of the Seven Fear Squad community. I, I 50 million chains, rings, all that. I, I stopped wearing it because it becomes less important. And I, that may not be everybody because some rappers still wear all their chains, but it just, the value of it is, it's, it depreciates. It's like, it's worse than a car. It's way uh -huh. worse than a car. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Unless you buy solid stones, you right. know, like what GIA certified, which you're not, you know what I'm saying? Because, <laughs> because, because people think, you know, like, and there are some jewels that are ripping you off, but for the most part, quality, you pay for quality. And people right. don't pay for quality. They pay, they like to pay cheaper. And by the way, that's right. If you're going to invest in jewelry, you got to 
buy the certified stuff, serialized stuff. So my watch, my wife's ring, everything's serialized, everything's numbered. G-I-A-A certified with the four C's. What is it? The four C's of, of, of diamonds of cut, clarity, color, and carrot, right? These are some of the things that you want to look at. You, you look at a uh, baseball card. This is a, a John Morant baseball card. This is, I got a couple of them here, right? Actually, I got more than a couple of them. I got a bunch. I got, I got, I got a stack of them right here. These are all certified and authenticated by PSA. We pull them from a pack. We get them sent into PSA. These are investments to me. Okay, it may not be jewelry, but these are investments to me, you see? So to have an investment, it has to be finite. It has to be limited. It's got to be serialized. It's got to be authenticated. A lot of fake stuff. So in other words, people might have the disposition to buy fake jewelry. Again, for what? To impress other people that don't necessarily pay your bills. So what's the point? Mm -hmm. To try and get the same thing, but right. it's not the same thing because the quality is way worse, which then depreciates insanely. So the point I'm making is... I understand it because I when I was young, I wanted to buy jewelry. Uh -huh. So I get I'm not telling you don't, but don't make it a necessity like you need to. You know what I'm right. saying? Like you don't I it was a necessity for me. I was spending a hundred grand a week mm. in the jewelry store. I needed new By the way, a lot of people know me because I love Jays. I wear Jays. My son's named Jordan, okay? That's how much I love Jordans. And uh anyway, make a long story short, I was forty two years old before I got my first pair of Jays. Everybody else got J's. My kids got J's. People around me got J's. I was 42 years old when I got my first pair of J's. In fact, the first pair of J's I didn't even buy. I earned it in a sales contest. So after that, I created certain things and parameters for me to say, you know what, if I do certain things in my life, I buy this. Why? Because it meant something to me that I had the ability to control my income, to increase my income. And in doing so, spending a de minimis amount of money on Jordans meant a lot to me. But buying Jordans for me was like buying a cheeseburger because I wanted to make sure this sales goal created revenue where I wasn't breaking the bank to buy a pair of J's. And that's why I waited until I was 42 years old to buy a pair of J's. So whatever it is, make sure it's important to you that it's uh, not something that uh, you're enslaved to, but it's yet a goal, something that carrot for you to go out there. That's your next. By the way, you have to have something that fires you up. If buying jewelry does fire up, set a goal. It necessarily ends up impress other people, but if buying jewelry fires you up, you that's your next and hitting a marker, then causes you to set a financial trigger to create a financial revenue to buy a piece of jewelry, whatever it is, and it's only a the cost, the relevance of it is that the equivalent of buying a cheeseburger. Knock yourself out. But are you going to break the bank to buy a piece of jewelry? It's probably not a wise financial decision. Piece every week I was bored. I want a new watch. Damn. I want on every for two years. By the way, there it is. If you're bored, you end up spending money. If you're in your grind, you're in your hustle. Guess what? You're not bored, and you don't end up spending money. Interesting point there. I was I was crazy. Every nigga around me had some kind of jewelry on. Right. My mom was more icy than these rap niggas. You know right. what I'm saying? But I learned so much from it. You know, like had I, I didn't have anyone. I didn't come from money, so I didn't have no one back then to tell me no. You don't do that. Yo, invest in stock or or. Uh, I wish I had someone tell me about cryptocurrency f back then. I knew about it because I used to scam, so I knew about it. But I didn't know about it in a way of investment. By the way, the recording of this video is June 14th. Let me look at my uh, crypto.com app. Where is Bitcoin right now? Where is cryptocurrency right now? Crypto is just getting hammered at this very moment. And I'm just curious, are you buying the dip? Is this the time for you to buy more crypto? I'm curious, put it in the comment section below. But right now, uh, Bitcoin, um, it was it was a high. It was at a high of 61,000 at one point. Now it's at 21,000 uh, Bitcoin. Uh, Ethereum, uh, 1,100. Um, uh, Cardano, Kronos, man, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is getting hammered. So sure, uh, I'm pretty sure he's, I wish somebody taught me about crypto, but also understand the risk of crypto. Here's a video of Waka Flocka talking about what he did with two to $3 million in a life insurance policy. And during the crash of the market, during the recession, especially if the insurance policy we think we he purchased, he's not experiencing any of the losses right now. What's going on in the market? If you bought a whole life policy, universal life policy, index universal life policy, which we suspect he did, he's not experiencing any losses right now. If you got money inside cryptocurrency, 100% of the losses you're experiencing right now. So uh, yeah, Liliati, awesome. I'm glad he's wanting to expand his level of financial awareness because here's what I break financial literacy into. Four parts of financial literacy is you have to be aware of what you don't know. Number two, you gotta be educated about what you don't know. And number three, you gotta start behaving differently if you want to acquire money and therefore it causes you to have different actions when it causes you to be around money. So these four things, what I consider the four areas and four pillars of financial literacy. I knew about it in a way of using Bitcoin to use the to hit the black market, but if I knew about it in investment terms of using it to flip it. You would have put that four million on Bitcoin. Man, I would have put many more millions in four. And that four million dollars of Bitcoin would be less than, what, 1.5 million a day? 
So, you know, the flip side to it, sounds sexy when it's good. Stock sounds sexy when it's good. Real estate sounds sexy when it's good. But I always say, show me to when it was bad. How are you going to stomach it then? You know, it's like relationships. You don't know about the person you're dating until you get into your first argument or two or three or four and things get really ugly between the two of you. Same thing too with money. Show it to me when it's bad. We have a saying in financial service. We have a saying in our, in our firm. said, if you don't trust your own mother's money in this particular financial strategy, investment, whatever you want to call it, then don't put your own money into it. Don't put your client's money into it. I would have I would have did investments, some right. bonds, or bought bought actual gold, right? Gold bars, mm -hmm. silver bars. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Shit that with value. You know, mm -hmm. like real assets, some paintings or or something. Also, don't lease. Don't lease. Not understand when you're young. Like I was young. They told me I couldn't buy a house because I was so young. Unless mm -hmm. I was gonna buy it right out. But that credit is everything. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying credit is extremely Talk important. To them. Like like. Credit is more important than having money. Yes. <laughs> We've said in the past, especially during downturns, cash flow is king. Credit is queen. And cash in a bank, just to have cash in a bank, just to have cash in a bank and not to invest in anything, not to earn a higher rate of return just because you feel safe about it. And cash in a bank is just for jokers. So Dave Ramsey put up a post and said, teenagers do not need a credit card. I replied, yes, they do. I got a bunch of people just dropping just nailing me on, on that because a lot of people don't think that uh, credit is important. But listen, the reality of life is this. If you don't have good credit, it's going to affect the place that you live, the car they drive, even the jobs that you get because some employers even do a credit check on you and it's going to affect potentially the relationships that you get involved in. So credit is important, extremely important. So if somebody told you that credit and getting credit and obtaining credit and, and having a high credit score isn't important, well, guess what? You're in for a very rude awakening because some of the goals and dreams that you would love to have and acquire you can't get it without credit okay the apartment that you want to get the landlord says you got no credit sorry you can't live here you want to have that dream house sorry you don't have enough established credit you don't have enough history on your credit sorry you can't get it the credit cards listen if we can't uh, document that you've gotten a credit card before let's start with you off a, with a secured credit line so therefore we can offer you the best bells and whistles type of credit card later on after you established history with us so credit history is extremely important having credit is extremely important you want luxury cars one of the best ways to do it is what we call a financial hack strategy in terms of a car hack strategy by the way check out this video right here how i bought up my rolls royce and paid 25 bucks a month for it it's because of due to credit and entrepreneurship and buying it through a corporation and getting the bonus depreciation etc cetera, etc cetera, and all that stuff but you can learn that by understanding the money game and when somebody says no you don't do it never do this never do that you have to ask the question why yes it is I, every around me all my live with me i they'll tell you i made sure i have like credit banking bank accounts all that shit is important because you know yes, no one really teaches it to us no, nobody yeah. no no one taught me I, had i had learned it i would I, i'm still good but i've been a lot I've been a lot better you know right. what i'm saying like and think about this who taught you about money was it your good experiences or your bad experiences and sadly many of us learn from our bad experiences with money but guess what it doesn't always have to be that way listen when i'm around wealthy people when i'm around rich people guess what they always talk about their experiences their lessons, their mistakes to avoid. When I'm around people in the multicultural middle class, guess what they don't want to share? They want to share the plans. They don't want to share their goals. They don't want to share their experiences. They want to share their aspirations. They think that somebody else is going to steal it from them. Listen, wealthy is about having an abundant mentality. And if you want to be poor, you want to be broke, it's about scarcity. There's not enough. Oftentimes people, because you're from the hood or how you're raised, the only reason why somebody wins is because somebody took away from somebody and now they're lost. Now they're lost. That's not the way of capitalism. That's not the way of entrepreneurship. The best sales, there's ways of entrepreneurship, the ways about going about business is somebody wins, the ultimate the customer wins, the sales rep wins, the company wins, everybody wins when there is a ethical way of having a product or service being delivered. There is win-win type of situations. And when you're working from an abundance mentality, guess what? They're all around you. But no one, I had no one to teach me financial literacy and did you come literacy. it's crazy even artists like this celebrities like this nobody's nobody's around and all the celebritism <laughs> is that a word nobody's teaching them the rules of the money game and then they're left to their own devices and then the mistakes are are magnified on media and uh and i'm glad that uh, you guys are tuned in right now so therefore you can learn from other people's mistakes because that is actually wisdom it's one thing to learn it yourself but also to learn from other people and their experiences with it now you're gaining and acquiring wisdom it reminds me of proverb it goes like this listen my sons to a father's instruction pay attention and gain understanding i give you sound learning so do not forsake my teaching 
For I too was a son to my father, still tender and cherished by my mother. Then he taught me and he said to me, take hold of my words with all your heart. Keep my commands and you will live. Get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget my words or turn away from them. Do not forsake wisdom and she'll protect you. Love her and she'll watch over you. The beginning of wisdom is this, get wisdom. Though it costs all you have, get understanding. And guess who King Solomon's father was? It was David. You remember that story in the Bible? David and Goliath. He, he took out Goliath. This little shepherd boy took out the big giant Goliath. Well, guess whose son was? Solomon. And Solomon wrote these words. So if you're going to get something from this video, I hope that I can provide a medium of, what, of you to learn from other people's mistakes. Wisdom. And then, you get, a, and then you get a big bag of money. At 18. And it's like, okay, what well, I'm gonna well, I want to buy jewelry and let's go get <laughs> right. some chains and a right. penthouse and I'm gonna get the rover and <laughs> right. you know what I'm saying? But but had I, I had had I had financial literacy at some point, I think you know, I think labels, when they sign new artists, they should put their artists in financial literacy class. Ooh, that kind of tells you, even people with the money don't even help their artists who is bound to earn millions and millions of dollars. Why don't they? Why don't they? Did you ever, did you ever wonder that? Listen, every, every time somebody comes in our company, we sit down across the kitchen table there, across our conference with them, and we give them a crash course on the money game, financial literacy 101. And then we actually ask them to get licensed, so therefore they can have a license to get access to conference calls and webinars that are, that are done through market makers and market movers, so therefore get aware of what's going on. When I used to read the newspaper, y'all okay, don't laugh at me because I read the newspaper, but when I used to read the newspaper, I used to read the sports section. Now it's talking about money, now it's about the Wall Street Journal and the, the money section of the newspaper. Why? Because my financial literacy got tuned into a different type of frequency. What frequency are you tuned in? And if you're not tuned into the right frequency, guess what happens to your financial reality? It doesn't get tuned, period. It crashes, it gets hazy. Have you, you ever listened to a radio? I'm, I'm dating myself, but ever listen to a radio or you listen to something and the speakers aren't connected and there's a hissing noises? Well, that's what happens when you're not financially literate or you're connected to the right resources and to the right counselors. That would be amazing because then be. you not only are you setting your artists up to make money, like to do well, but to make money living forever. And but they don't long. care about that because right. all they care about is them making money off of the artists. But if you had a label that did that, man, that's I saving, that's saving, that's saving an artist's life because rap does not last forever. It don't. Unless you're Drake because he is still the number one artist. But <laughs> hey, hmm, this is an idea. Maybe this is a business opportunity. Here's an idea. If this is not out in the marketplace and Lil Yada's talking about it's not in the marketplace, maybe we become investors in a record label. And uh, when we sign artists, part of the conversation is when they first sign their deals, they have a financial literacy course. We educate them about money because here's the thing about being an artist. If you continue to recreate yourself as an artist, you continue to put out good content, good quality songs. People want you for a very, very, very long time. Like Snoop Dogg is continuing to recreate themselves over decades. Even my kids know who Snoop Dogg is. And I grew up with Snoop Dogg in the 80s and the 90s. So if you continue to recreate yourself you, as an artist, unlike an athlete, you can recreate yourself in 10, 20, 30, 40, potentially even 50 years and still be relevant in the marketplace because you're financially literate. You got a lot of things going on that's bringing you money. So you have to have things set in line for a rainy day. Which we don't do. Like, I know Corona opened a lot of eyes for a lot of artists. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I know it opened a lot of eyes. You know, a lot it, of people got lot, creative, and then a lot got really quiet. A lot a lot of them realized that they ain't have as much money as they thought they had. Uh, they a lot of money, yeah. A lot of people realize that they have a lot to maintain. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, me personally, this ain't got shit to do with nothing. I shouldn't even say this. But I got, I pay, 50, every monthly, I got $52,000 in bills. Dude. Okay, by the way, that's that's kind of low for a guy of his stature, 52000 a month in bills. That's over $600,000 a year in expenses. So he's got expenses more than some people make a year in a couple decades. So let's continue. I'm, I'm, I'm curious, what, where's he going with this? You know what I'm saying? And I have to work. Right. You know, like even if I had, let's say, let's say I got $13 million in the bank, right? If my overhead is fifty two thousand every month because of my houses and my staff and cars and yeah, insurance and go. all these things I take care of and all these people, that, that thirteen will run dwindle. down exactly. because that's just the bills. That's I still the, like to live. I'm right. still a rapper. By the way, thirteen million sounds like a lot of money. Some of you think that make, having a million dollars is a lot of money. Five million dollars a lot of money. Ten million, a hundred million dollars a lot of money. But the problem is, is if you increase your lifestyle to match your your, your current uh, income, 
And this is what a lot of people do. Forget, by the way, forget $50,000, $52,000 a month. Some of you have expenses of $5,200 a month, and yet you're only earning $5,000 a month. You're earning $5,000 a month, but yet you're spending $5,200. The other $200, you're extending yourself on credit or cash advances. By the way, that was me when I was making 800 bucks every two weeks as a sergeant United States Marine. So it's all relative. People making $100,000 a year are feeling paycheck to paycheck. People making quarter, there's a new one. People making a quarter million, check out this article right here. People making a quarter million dollars are feeling paycheck to paycheck. Why? Because as the income grows, and you think people get financial literacy down pat as the income grows, but that's not necessarily the case. Guess what also grows? Their eyeballs, their tastes, their lifestyle. The idea is to make a quarter million dollars in income and only $50,000 worth of expenses. So therefore you can bank the other 200,000. Let's say you take another $50,000 in taxes, another $25,000 in, in charity and, and tithes and offerings. You're still there with a fat amount of money left over between, uh, and that, in that example, uh, 175 to $50,000. You have $125,000 left over for investing, for it to start working for you. And the flip side is most people have themselves working for money. You should be having money work for you. And that's all about the seven figure squad. This is why this channel exists. Tell people think like a millionaire, to strategize like a millionaire, so therefore you can become a first generation cash flow millionaire because money works for you. I still wanna go to nice dinners. Eat well. Fly my girl out, go to my, see my girl. We still wanna do all these things. Mm -hmm. You have to be making money while you're sleeping. You know what I'm saying? Like never just have one source of income. Never. Even if it's six figures, like nigga could be making 200 a show six shows a week, but that still should not be the only bag. No. So for example, I reminded of 50 Cent. I remember watching a, another interview of his. Okay, by the way, if you wanna watch the reaction video of 50 Cent, check this out right here. But remember him and Floyd Mayweather used to hang out a lot. And next thing you know, they stopped hanging around each other. Okay, both bosses, both kings, okay? And uh, in the interview he said, hey, well, how can we stop hanging around with Floyd Mayweather? He said, listen, Floyd used to spend money and then he have to fight to make the money back. And then he spend the money and then he had to fight to make the money back. To spend the money, and the fight to make the money back. And this whole vicious cycle started going around. He said, listen, I can't hang with people just like that. Even Kevin Hart said, listen, in one of his stand-up comedians especially, he said, listen, I can't hang around athletes. Why? Because here I am as a comic, and I'm hanging around with athletes. Athletes want to spend $20,000 and popping bottles on a night. Listen, listen, dog, the way it works, I got to transfer money from my savings account to my checking account, and it just takes three days to transfer. That's what Kevin Hart is talking about. The power of association can actually have you do great things or bad things that you celebrate or you regret. Again, the choice is yours. What do you want in your life? You know what I'm saying? And I think it's so dumb if you just let the money sit in the bank account. That's dumb. That's, just, that's, just, that's what we just said. Cash in the bank, just have cash in the bank is for jokers. Sitting. It's just there. It's yours, of course, but it's not going or it's not going up unless you, you make it go up. But you, it, it's so many things you can do to make that money double, triple. Increase. While you sleep, while you snoring, Absolutely. while mm -hmm. you're working for the other job. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I but do. But no one tells no one this. Like, it's becoming, stocks It's becoming so popular now in the generation, cryptocurrency. I think that's dope. But it should have been popular. Right. Kids well, should have been interested in Robin Hood and all this other but, shit. Well, one thing's for sure, two things for certain way. You said your generation changed the, the music industry. Your generation changed a lot of shit. Yeah, that's true. Because. Well, the internet changed too. Everything changed. Life right. just changed. Because I see more, like. Rich young yeah, and more mm -hmm. there's 21, mm -hmm. 22 that's invested in stock and mm -hmm. yo, such and such airlines and yo, you you don't be on Robin Hood and it's like at twenty years old. <laughs> well, see, we just, about, that's what I'm saying. My, that's he was thinking about running up in some shit, robbing some shit. That's mm -hmm. why I said the younger this you are, you're more stock. fortunate. Like, that's what I'm saying. You're more fortunate like, the younger you are, especially in today's time, because we have the advantage of the internet, which yes, you, you have the power of money compounding growing over an entire lifetime. So when you're looking at this guy right here, I'm reminded of another scripture by uh, King Solomon. He talks about having multiple streams of income. Once you have your main thing, and the problem sometimes is when people are too early and too early, young and early in their career, they try to diversify too fast. So what Lil Yachty here is talking about is there's so many other things to put your money into to earn a rate of return. In Ecclesiastes, King Solomon talks about just that, and here's how it reads. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse two reads like this. Invest in seven ventures. Yes, in eight, you do not know what disaster may come upon the land. If clouds are full of water, they pour rain on the earth. Whether the tree falls to the south or to the north, if the place where it falls, there it will lie. Whoever watches the wind will not plant. Whoever looks at the clouds will not reap. 
as you do not know the path of the wind or how the body is formed in a mother's womb, so you cannot understand the work of God, the maker of all things. So you see it in the morning and at evening, let your hands not be idle, for you do not know which will succeed, whether this or that, or whether both will do equally well. What a profound thing for King Solomon, the richest king and wisest king who ever lived for, to say something like that. I got all these things going on. I'm just watching, I'm waiting, but I better get multiple things going on at the same time, especially if I earn my initial seed capital to invest in many other things. Now, don't do this too soon though. Because sometimes if you haven't perfected one thing, if for example, Lily Yad didn't perfect one thing and he perfected one thing very early in his career, which is become an artist. He signed a deal. And then once you make your millions and then you look into other things versus trying to split your way up into many different other things too soon because it just might be too much of a distraction. The Dude. world. You didn't have the internet. No, we ain't had that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like how it it's on my phone and I can you can get knowledge if you but you have to of course you have to want to get the knowledge. Absolutely. It ain't gonna just pop up on your phone. Right. You have to go do research and right. homework. But if you care, it's there. As you wrap up, that's the point. Uh, an older generation you had to go to a library or encyclopedias, or in this case, what, uh, what Gilly was ta talking about was you had to bump into something. You had to get a plug in and a foot in the door. Where today, right here, the power is right in the cell phone. The reason why many people that are younger today, younger artists, I mean, look at the basketball players. Look at the athletes today. They're just jamming out, jumping out the gym. Why? Because they have access to watching Michael Jordan play on the internet when they're five. They saw these athletes and celebrities perform when there are 10 and the vision of them doing something big in life came a lot earlier and, of, and the access to people willing to coach, train and teach, a lot more businesses are available to do those type of things, to get people to a platform of success and exposure. And so I don't know what you're thinking, Seven Fear Squad community, I'd love to know what your thoughts are. You agree with me, you don't agree with me. What did Lil Yachty say? And by the way, thank you so much to Lil Yachty for sharing this and even though it was unsolicited for him to talk about this, to talk about financial literacy, and thank you so much for Wallow and Gilly here to uh, to talk about this here in Million Dollars Worth the Game uh, uh, podcast. I appreciate the blessing they are to, to a lot of people who continue to watch them and to, for me to unpack and to react to it and see the things that are being talked about in the community to change the culture, to change our community, to change the multicultural middle class, to be more successful from a financial standpoint, from an entrepreneurial standpoint, because listen, man, there's a saying out there. Give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. In other words, you get a check from somebody else, you get a check from the government, you get a check from the boss, boom, you'll eat for that day. But teach a man how to fish. Teach a man how to make his own bread, his own money, his own enterprise. Wow, watch out for the man. Because that man or woman will eat forever. And their children, and one of the kids, will pick it up too as well. So before I let you guys go, please check out these other two reaction videos here to some of the other artists and celebrities and athletes we've had a reaction to in terms of the lessons we learned about money and entrepreneurship, success, and uh, and failures too as well. So uh, before I let you go, if you've enjoyed this video, please consider hitting like. If you watch a couple of our other videos and you haven't done so yet, please consider hitting subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. From Dallas, Texas, I'm your money smart guy. And until we meet again, Continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.